Hi you guys. What what is going on? Okay, so I'm just gonna adjust you guys. So I was in the middle of making a video for you to show you how I do a sweetening jar and my iPad dies. So I've already got the process started which is okay and I'm just gonna go over this again um, the only reason why I don't just throw the stuff out and do it all over again from scratch is because this sweetening jar actually is for a client and I just you know the client has purchased the supplies and everything and I just I'm not gonna waste them but anyway Okay, sweetening jars, honey jars, honey jar spells, love jar spells, what are they? Okay, a sweetening jar is traditional to uh, hoodoo and other folk magic as well. The purpose of a sweetening jar is to sweeten someone to you to the things that you may want them to do. So you can do a sweetening jar on your boss if you're trying to get a raise, you know, you're trying to get that promotion um, on your perspective boss because you are trying to get hired somewhere. Um, you can do a sweetening jar on your spouse, your significant other, on someone you hope to be your significant other. Um, sweetening jars are mainly used in love spells to sweeten the other person to you. But again, they can be used in a wide range of things um, or a wide range of reasons, I should say. What I'm doing is not, um, this is not a love spell, actually. This sweetening jar, um, without really going into details, but this sweetening jar is for a court case. And we are trying to sweeten the judge so that the case goes in the favor of the person going to court. So I'm just going to leave it at that. So. The things that you need for a sweetening jar are, obviously, you need a jar. I like to use these little baby food jars, little Gerber baby food jar. And for me, they're the perfect size. They are big enough for me to put everything I want in them, but they're not too big. And anything smaller than this, to me, I just feel wouldn't really hold all of the ingredients. But, you know, you work with what you have. Um, Sorry, you guys, like something is, something, I don't know, my cat hair or something. Um, also, very important is you want something that has a metal lid on it. Um, I wouldn't recommend using glass. The candle may not stick that well, and metal lids are a little bit better because they're fire resistant and because I'm going to be burning a candle on top. So you want a metal lid. Um, also, and you don't have to do this. This is what I do. You guys know I'm a very big on not being wasteful, you know. Um, if I see a penny on the ground, I pick it up. I don't like to waste the baby food, so I usually buy, like, applesauce, and I eat it because I like applesauce, and therefore I don't feel like it's being wasted. Um, or you can, you know, give it as an offering to a deity, something sweet. If you have a deity that likes apples, you can put it on their altar, but I eat it, so just a little side note. Okay, the next thing that you will need, and you don't have to have all these ingredients. If all you have is just honey, that's fine. If all you have is just sugar, that's fine. You can use any combination of things that you want. This is just what I do, what I like to do, what I feel works, and you can kind of just take it in. There's so many different ways of doing sweetening spells, but I have some brown sugar here, just regular old brown sugar. Um, I don't have any honey right now. I'm out of honey. I have sweetening um, corn syrup, so that's what I'm going to be using. And in a lot of hoodoo spells and folk magic, they will tell you that you should use a sweetener that is the color of the person's skin that you're working on that you want to sweeten. Well, given the nature of the situation, I don't know what color the judge is, so we're going to use the light syrup and the dark brown sugar. That should cover all my bases because it's either one of the two colors. Okay, 
the next thing, <laughs> the next thing that I'm going to use is rose petals. Okay, you guys can see that. Pink roses. And again, because roses are associated with what? Love. And we want the judge to come from a loving, open-minded, open-hearted, you know, willing to hear the case and, and be sweetened and, and favor on the side of the person. Um, and also, whenever I do any type of spell work, especially for something as intense as this, it all needs to come from love. That's, you know, love really helps you manifest things. The next ingredient that I have is a sachet powder. This is herbs that are powdered and these are specifically for legal cases. Hi John the Conqueror spirit water with the roots inside. This lighting is terrible. That's why I like my iPad. You can't... You guys can see it. Let me shake it up. But... Can you guys see that? I don't know. Maybe you can see it like that. This is... I'm so sorry, you guys. But, yeah, it has the little herbs down in there. And this stuff smells great. Court case. Spirit water. And then you want your, um, your oils. I have just judge oil. Hi, John the Conqueror oil. Good luck oil. That's self-explanatory. Road opener, because we are trying to open the roads for this um, individual. And success oil, because we want the spell to be successful and we want the court case to be successful in our favor. You will also need your petition paper. Um, you can use parchment paper. I'm always inclined to use paper bag. I also think it's kind of... You know, back in the day, they used, they didn't have parchment paper. You used paper bag. Um, you can also, you know, this is going to be prayed over and worked on. You can use your words of power. You can use incantations. You can use prayers. Again, what I like to use is I work out of this. I've been wanting to tell you guys about this too. Anna Riva, um, Power of the Psalms book. This book is amazing, and you can see on there, love, power, revenge, success, blessings, prosperity, and protection, per rituals, and prayers, all 150 psalms are included. Um, you know, I've said this before, I don't work out of the Bible, nothing against the Bible, it's just not my book to use, I like my book of shadows. But the Psalms are very powerful prayers, and they do work, and I've always incorporated them. And I am an eclectic witch, but a lot of the magic that I practice is, is based on hoodoo, and Psalms were definitely incorporated in a lot of hoodoo spells. As you guys can see, my book is falling apart. Um, I have had this book for 20 years. And it has gotten 20 years worth of work out of it. I'm honestly, like, surprised the cover's even still on. Excellent book, though. AnnaRivas.com. Um, amazing, amazing, amazing book. So, if you guys don't know any prayers or can't think of anything to say, or this is a good choice. All right. So what I did, since this was already done when my iPad died, I put my dry ingredients in first. So the roses went in, the brown sugar went in, the sachet powder went in. I always do things in the number of three, seven, or thirteen. So I did three bunches of rose petals or three um, pinches, three pinches of the sugar, and then I just poured the sachet powder in until the spirit said stop. Also, the same thing for the oils. Um, the oils were just poured until I felt, okay, you know what, that's enough. So all, all five of the oils went in individually. Then I put in my spirit waters. Now, there isn't a particular order that you have to do this, but what's most important is you want to leave enough space. So I poured everything to about right here because I still had to put in my sweetener, which is very thick. So I put in about this much sweetener, and as you can see, if you can see, 
the oil and the sweetener has separated in the water but that's okay because the jar is going to be shooken and prayed over every day then I left just enough space here at the top just enough to where I can incorporate my petition paper now because of confidentiality I cannot show you the petition paper because I have my clients name on here and what I plan on writing but you know you would put the name of the person that you're working on if it's a love spell you would put their name in your name if it's a job or a raise you're trying to get you would put their name in your name and you can put hire me or um, um, promotion you really want to use one or two word sentences so give me one second Okay, so now that I've written my petition paper, I'm going to take it and fold it to me, towards myself. So I'm going to draw in the sweetening, the love. We want this to work, so you always want to fold things into you. So I'm going to fold it towards me, turn it clockwise, fold it towards me again, turn it clockwise. And I'm doing that three times. Um... Now, this looks like it's going to fit. I could fold it again, but I'm pretty sure that this is going to fit down in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just... Put my intent into it and place this down inside of the... Um, down inside the honey jar. Now, once you put the lid on your honey jar, and again, this is not straight across the board. It is different for everyone. Um, I don't open them again. So I make sure I put everything I was going to put in this honey jar because once it's closed, it is closed. Some people say you can open them to work on them and put more things in them later on. You know, it kind of, it just, that's up to you. I'm not saying my way is the right way. I'm just saying this is the way that I do it. So once you've got the top on there, really good, really secure. I'm going to shake it up. Make sure everything's really mixed in good. And then I'm going to burn, oh shit, I didn't get the candle. I have the candle. But you guys get the idea. I'm going to burn a candle, a um, chime candle. That's a little small three-inch candle on top. Or you can burn the large stick candle. Um, you can burn glass candles. I've seen people do glass candles on honey jars, but I would recommend doing a jar that has a larger, that the top is a larger circumference so it can support the weight. I wouldn't do a tiny little small jar like this. Um, yeah, but the stick candles is traditionally what's used. This here, I'm going to work on this for... Bum, 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 bum. I'm going to work on this for seven days. So for seven days, I'm going to be burning seven candles. I'm going to be praying over this jar. And then the spell is going to be set and cast. And it's just going to remain on my altar. I have a lot of workings for people. I have a working altar for clients. And I, um, I leave their stuff on there for a while so that it can continue to get energy and so even though the spell will be cast, I'm still going to leave it on my altar. Um, I don't know. I'm going to let the spirit tell me, but I feel like I'm, I'm going to be holding on to this, to this baby for a while. And that is how you do a court case sweetening jar. So um, I hope that that was informative. If you guys have questions, you know you are more than welcome to post them in the comment box below. I will do my best to respond to your questions as quickly as possible. Um, 
If you want to, you can hit me on Facebook under Jasmine Atten, A-T-E-N, Mystic at the Crossroads. If you guys want me to do another spell, another honey jar on love spells, because I've done a few of them and they have been quite successful, leave me a comment below and I will show you a couple of other honey jars that I have here, okay? Thank you for watching. I love you guys. I love you, love you, love you. And, um, let's be.